everybody, this is Becky Legiro for CoinGeek.com. I am here with Steve Shatters, the CTO of Enchain. And we are here at CoinGeek Zurich. This is super exciting to have an in-person, well, sort of in-person event here in this lovely facility. And Steve gave a presentation on the Terranode project and what we can expect with this project in the future for the Bitcoin SB blockchain. But Steve, first of all, when you started off talking, you mentioned the white paper and how Satoshi Nakamoto said that miners are going to cluster and specialize in the future. Can you just elaborate to our audience what, what this means? Well, um, I, I quoted something uh, from Satoshi where he talked about server farms, and that's the part that I think people focus on most about that particular quote, that uh, he expected that Bitcoin nodes would be run on many machines in a, in, a, in a large clustered environment. But it was a kind of a nuanced part to that quote that indicated that uh, uh, different parts of the cluster would actually specialize in different tasks. Uh, and he described that there would just be one or two nodes dealing with the networking part of, uh, of Bitcoin. And it's described in section five of the white paper, it's actually one of those steps is, is, is nodes will uh, uh, collect and broadcast transactions from the network. Um, so it just turns out that different types of machines happen to be better at different types of work. Uh, and that's one of the big challenges for us at, in the Terranode project is working out the ideal uh, distribution, I suppose, of workloads to machines and, and, and matching them up properly. Very good. And when you say specialize, what do you mean? In what different ways do you think nodes will be speciali specializing in the future? Um, well, I'm talking about cluster nodes as opposed to a node, and, and I suppose the terminology uh, is important because a, a node may be many, many cluster nodes, many physical machines, okay. yeah. Um, but, you know, there are some jobs that require huge amounts of memory, uh, and um, you can get optimal performance by doing them that way. So you might have one server configured with lots of memory, but it doesn't really need a, you know, hefty C CPU. It doesn't need to store anything, uh, doesn't need to store much on disk. Uh, and there's other loads that are very CPU intensive, so you would offload those to different types of machines. Uh, maybe even machines that have different internal architectures, uh, but it's really just about uh, matching the workload to uh, the equipment that is sort of best uh, positioned or best equipped to, to perform that type of work. Very good, and you mentioned it a bit earlier, but can you describe how this all ties into the Terranode project? So the Terranode framework itself is basically a flexible framework that allows you to distribute work amongst a set of different machines. And it's not actually even specific to Bitcoin. You could build a pipeline on top of Terranode that did something completely unrelated to, to Bitcoin. But of course, this is what we are using it for. Um, and so uh, we built not only the capability to distribute all of the work uh, among the machines, but also the capability to measure the, the, the results of that because um, the engineering work of a Terranode doesn't uh, stop with the writing of the software. Uh, it's, the, uh, it's the configuration of the pipeline, um, matching it to the machines that you have available, how you deal with capacity management. It's actually going to be a full-time job. The, the Terranode operator is, is going to be a full-time engineering job in the future. Amazing, and throughout all of the CoinGeek conferences, we've always talked about BSV's ability to scale, and this just really separates it from the other blockchains out there. So what will the Terranode project be doing in terms of increasing the ability to just scale so massively? So we often talk about scale in terms of uh, throughput rates, block sizes, uh, transactions per second, uh, and people want to quote ever, ever higher numbers. Um, the goal of Terranode is to actually wipe out that paradigm altogether because uh, if you have a you know throughput capacity of 50,000 transactions per second and all you need to do to increase it to 100 is to bring two more machines up. Well, what does it mean to say, I've got 50, I've got 100? Because, well, you might have 100, but I can just bring two more machines up and have 150. Uh, that throughput and those numbers are purely a function of demand because when the demand is there, the revenue is there to bring up additional, you know, provision additional machines uh, and increase the capacity. Uh, and so, you know, Terranode takes these sort of limits of, uh, of throughput and block size, etc., and just blows them out of the water. There aren't any anymore. Absolutely amazing. Is there anything else you wanted to share with our audience about this project and why it excites you so much and probably you're working crazy hours <laughs> to get this done? Well, I mean, it's probably one of the most fun projects I think I've ever worked on. The second most fun was uh, was the first one that I did in Bitcoin uh, eight or nine years ago. But it's a shift in paradigm, I think, uh, in, in people's understanding, and, and that, that will mean that some people will not understand what the point of it is. Uh, it's a work in progress, and I don't think that Terranode will ever actually be finished, uh, because once you have one that is functioning and does all of the, bit, the bits of work that are required, according to the white paper, 
there's always optimizations. There's always better way, always better ways to do it. There's always, um, you know, uh, improved architectures, etc. And we've designed the Terranode framework in such a way as to allow people to get in and actually uh, tweak it, optimize it, work on it, uh, and you know, if necessary, even replace it one day. So, um, I think that people involved in the mining industry and, and other Bitcoin industries that might make use of uh, the Terranode framework uh, would um, benefit a lot from starting to learn about uh, how the framework works in the near future uh, once we uh, put all the documentation and, and, and code out um, because there's a lot of opportunity there to, uh, to compete and be ahead of the pack. Amazing. Can't wait for that day and for that party when the paperwork and everything is out there. Steve, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the work you do for this ecosystem. And it's been a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you, Becky. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Becky LeDrew with Steve Shatters for CoinGeek.com.